Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Ashley Martella. We're very pleased to be joined by former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum. He served in the Senate for 12 years from 1995 to 2007. Before that, he was in the House for four years. He was also the chairman of the Senate Republican Conference, which is the third highest ranking job in party leadership. Welcome to Newsmax, Senator. Thank you, Ashley. Good to be with you. Your state has one of the most closely watched races in the nation right now. This We already know who's not going to be on the right, ballot in it, November. It was closely watched up until the primary. Now, whether it will continue to be, now that Specter's out, I don't know. But it certainly will be a contested race. Did Considering all the years Specter served in the in Senate, how many years he represented the people of Pennsylvania, did it surprise you that he got knocked off so handily? Well, I, I, it surprised me he gets knocked off as easily as he did. And when I say that, uh, Joe Sestak, uh, I would say, ran one of the weakest campaigns I've ever seen run in Pennsylvania. Uh, he didn't have much of an organization. Uh, he didn't do a particularly good job of raising money. Uh, he went out and said some controversial things, such as the things he's now potentially being investigated on that the president tried to bribe him to get him out of the race. I mean, he's a, he's a bit of an erratic kind of guy. And, uh, and he basically knocked Arlen Specter out of the race with one television commercial. Uh, now, it was a very effective commercial, but he was 20-some points down, and all of a sudden he ran an ad for two weeks prior to the election, had enough money to go on TV statewide, and proved that Arlen had a glass jaw, and uh, in Arlen you know, lost, ended up losing by eight points, which really wasn't even that close. He only won, I think, three counties in, out of 67 in the whole state. So uh, I think what it shows is that... Uh, uh, you know, if you're a 30-year incumbent and uh, you switch parties and you uh, give up every belief you had and go to the other, uh, other side and uh, you're rather cynical about why you're running, uh, people in this election are not going uh, to be supporting you, and that's what happened. Okay, Republican Pat Toomey versus Democrat Joe Sestak. Who's got the momentum and who do you think will pull it up? Well, I'd say right now that Sussex has the momentum. I mean, he, uh, he, he won a big victory. He had defeated the Obama White House, uh, you know, and, and I think he's got definitely a post-election surge. Most of the, camp, most of the uh, polling I've seen uh, shows that he has a small lead, uh, but he's also broke. He spent every dollar he had. Uh, Toomey's been able to raise money and, and uh, has money in the bank, did not run any advertising over the primary. So um, I think he's in good position right now, and I think the, uh, the trends, uh, the, what's going on across the country, certainly are, are definitely in his favor this time. And I think in the end, to, Pat will win it. What you mentioned uh, a short while ago, you're a lawyer by profession. Now, Sestak, of course, claims the White House offered him a high-ranking job in exchange for him not challenging Arlen Specter in the primary. Now, if this is true, how serious is that? I think it's very serious. I mean, you know, the President of the United States cannot and should not be out there trying to bribe people to, uh, uh, to you know, not run for political office. If you know, sort of put it in the inverse, I mean, you look, you have a, a governor of Illinois who's potentially going to go to jail by trying to sell an office. And here you're trying to, in a sense, uh, sell people not running for an office by giving, by giving them another office. So uh, I think that's, that's a big problem. I think the, uh, I, I saw uh, recently that the uh, uh, seven members of the Senate Judiciary Committee Republicans signed a letter asking for an independent counsel. Uh, I, I'm not particularly confident in this attorney general, given his, uh, his track record of not prosecuting uh, Democrats or liberals, uh, that he'll, he'll do anything. But I, I, would, I would hope that uh, they, they'd look at this and seriously, um, uh, seriously analyze whether a law was broken. Dick Morris says such an offer had to be approved by the president. Some say if he did, it's an impeachable offense. Is it? Well, if he broke the law, certainly, I mean, uh, if, if, if what he did um, in actually offering a bribe to a elected official uh, for, uh, for, for that political purpose, um, that certainly committing a crime like that is an impeachable offense, uh, no question about it. California Congressman Darrell Issa calling for an independent investigator, independent counsel to investigate this. Should the Republicans all be doing this? Oh, I don't think there's any question that, uh, why, like I said, seven members of the Senate Judiciary Committee, all seven of them, uh, asked for it. Uh, I suspect uh, you're going to see the, the leadership get behind it. Uh, he has not backed away from this. The White House has sort of danced around on it and said, you know, there were conversations, but, you know, he wouldn't characterize them that way. Uh, this needs to be investigated. And, um, and, you know, the fact is that Joe Sestak uh, had this offered to him and didn't come forward with it for quite some time. Uh, didn't come forward with it until he was asked a question on one of the one of the uh, one of the talk shows on television, and then after he said it, he sort of 
uh, sort of went quiet about it. That's all I have to say. And now I think he's being put on the spot and he's, uh, his credibility is now at stake. And whether, whether he is somehow you know, um, you know, guilty of at least not for, uh, not for coming forward and disclosing this is another issue. Okay. You mentioned Holder. Let's talk about his track record, as you mentioned for a moment. He wants to try terrorists in civilian courts. He wants to prosecute Bush-era attorneys who advise CIA interrogators. He wants terror suspects Mirandized. He won't say radical Islam played a role in the Fort Hood, Fort Hood shooting or even the Times Square bombing. Is it the right signal for an attorney general to be sending? You, you, for, you also forgot that, uh, that he dismissed charges against the Black, the Black Panthers. Pan, Black Pan, the right. thugs wielding the thugs at the thugs wielding, uh, clubs Yeah, at the, on, uh, on camera yeah, right. that that wasn't enough evidence to conclude there was voter intimidation. Uh, this is, this is uh, someone who, who, who obviously um, does not consider the threat uh, that we're in, engaged in, uh, that, that have engaged us, uh, the people who try to blow themselves up over the air of Detroit, the people who did successfully uh, kill people at Fort Hood. Uh, the uh, situation in Times Square and others to be a legitimate threat. Uh, but this is consistent, Ashley, with the entire administration. I mean, remember the QDR, which is the Quadrennial Defense Review that's put forward by the Pentagon. This is senior level folks at the Pentagon who have to put to together our, our, our review, Quadrennial Review. Every four years, we put together this review of the strategic, of the threats that face America as seen by our Defense Department. And not once was the word Islam or Muslim mentioned in that document. Yet they spent eight pages talking about the strategic threat to our country of global warming. Uh, so we have a we have a a, a politically correct uh, a, you know atmosphere not just in the uh, attorney general's office but in the defense department and in the White House and it's coming from the top down and so you can point the finger at Holder and I do but it's coming from President Obama. All right, turning to Arizona's immigration law, DOJ attorneys are recommending that Holder challenge it. Okay, Holder admits to a congressional panel he hasn't even read it, all 18 pages of it. Is this law in any way racist or unconstitutional in your view? No, the, the most remarkable thing about this is that there is a provision specifically in the bill that says you cannot do racial profiling. I mean, it's, there's, it's, it's a strong provision. It, there is no similar provision in federal law. And so, argue, not even arguably, factually, the Arizona law is tougher on racial profiling than the federal law. Yet, you don't hear Eric Holder and Barack Obama talking about repealing the federal law with respect to how ICE agents behave or border control agents behave in dealing with, uh, with potential illegals. And to go after the state of Arizona is, uh, on this issue is for one reason and one reason only, it's politics. They believe they can galvanize support of the Hispanic community in this country, just like they've galvanized by playing the politics of race. Now they're playing the politics, well, in this case, I guess, race or ethnicity. They're playing the same card to try to get the Hispanic community to be where the black community is today, which is monolithically Democrat. And they're looking forward in America and they're saying, you know, look, if we're going to be a majority minority country in about 30 or 40 years. If we can get the, the, the Hispanics on the other side of the, uh, the, the table from Republicans, drive them there by demagoguing this issue, uh, then that's all going to be worth it. So it's again, it's a power play on the part of President Obama. This is a man who was supposed to be a conciliator. This is a man who had no red state, blue state. We're going to bring people together. He has done anything but that. He has divided this country. He divides people by race. He divides them by gender. He divides them, divides them by every, every means you can possibly give to special classes of folks and pits one group against another to try to, for political advantage. And we're seeing that in spades right here. Are Obama and Holder lying about Arizona's immigration law? Yeah, and Calderon too, uh, the, the president of Mexico who came before a joint session of Congress and insulted the people of Arizona and the government uh, of uh, the state of Arizona and he got a standing, ovation, got a standing from Demo ovation Democrats. from Democrats, which was reprehensible uh, to see your, your country condemned and, be, and applauding that condemnation. Should Republicans be calling for Holder to step down, to resign or be fired? Uh, you know, here's the point. The point is he's doing everything that the administration is asking him to do. He, it's, if, if he was a rogue player, if he was out there doing things that were, uh, were inconsistent with what his boss wanted to do uh, and, and uh, to the left of where his boss was or out, out of step with what the law is, that would be one thing. But he's doing what Obama wants him to do. So uh, to me, the buck stops. Uh, to focus on Holder, you're focused on the wrong person. The person who's, who's in charge, the person who's, who's setting policy is Barack Obama. 
Okay, on the political front, what are the chances, do you think, of Republicans taking back the Senate this year? You know, if you'd asked me that even a few months ago, I'd have said very little chance. But uh, we have been able to recruit in the last six months some terrific candidates in states where we did not think we were going to have much of a chance to be to be in contention. Uh, most recently, Dino Rossi uh, stepping forward to run in the state of Washington. That puts the that puts Washington in play. The fact that Carly Fiorina is probably going to be the nominee in California will nominee in California will put California in play. Can she knock out Boxer? Uh, absolutely, she can uh, knock her out. She's uh, she's a strong conservative woman uh, and and one that will get the Republican base excited. And as a professional woman and leader in the community there, I think uh, you know has crossover appeal. So, uh, yeah, she she's uh, she's someone that could definitely put that in play. We've even got uh, you know chance of, of picking up a seat in um, uh, in Connecticut now because mm -hmm. of Blumenthal's comments, uh, 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 misstating uh, line, better way of putting it, line yeah, about his true. his Vietnam his Vietnam record. So those three states you know, jumped us from nine states being in play to now 12 states being in play, and we need to pick up 10 to get the majority. Well, is Obama's seat in play in Illinois? Absolutely. I mean, now, granted, the candidate we have is probably going to be the most moderate Republican running for the United States Senate. Matt Kirk is, uh, is a moderate, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I wish we could have nominated a conservative, but he got 60 percent of the primary vote, so he won it fair and square, and, and I'm for Matt, and I'm, he's certainly going to be better than Alexei Janoulias, who's uh, uh, whose bank was just taken over by, uh, by, by the federal government and who's got all sorts of ties to Tony Resco and a bunch of bad actors in Chicago, including the Daily Machine. So, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not our, in my opinion, it's not our best, uh, best candidate, but it's going to be better than what they put forward. And, of course, Joe Biden's old seat in Delaware is going to turn right, right? Yeah, and you, you pointed out the two seats where we will probably nominate folks that are more moderate than the mainstream of the Republican Party. Uh, but... Both those states are, are tough states for Republicans to win. Uh, Obama won his home state with, you know, 70 percent of the vote, won Delaware by almost 70 percent of the vote. So, I mean, they're tough states. And so uh, nominating more moderate Republicans in those states probably create the best chance for us to be successful. OK, you're being touted as a presidential candidate in 2012. Are you considering a run? Uh, I am considering it. I'm, I've been traveling around uh, the country, um, not just in Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina, but in, uh, in other states across the country and getting a lot of encouragement from people that um, we want someone who's not, not just been a conservative when it's convenient, but a conservative when it, when it, uh, when it costs you. And in 2006, I ran for re-election and uh, ran as an unabashed conservative and sent, in many respects to the right of the president on the war was uh, causing, uh, you know, talking about doing things to, uh, uh, to you know, like the surge uh, that he eventually did in 2007 and, and like confronting Iran before they were able to get a nuclear weapon. And, uh, you know, those things did not go over well then. And, uh, and yet uh, I stood forcefully for them. And I think one of the things that uh, the primary voters are looking for is they're looking for a Republican who's not, a, not ashamed of being a conservative. And not only who says they're a conservative and talks like they're a conservative, but actually has a record that shows that in good times and bad, they've stood by their guns and they, and they uh, you know, uh, believe what they say. Sarah Palin is a top prospect. If she runs, does she hurt or help the GOP? Well, I think to me, Sarah Palin's a net asset. She's, uh, she's someone that, uh, that energizes a lot of folks, particularly a lot of folks who aren't necessarily active in politics. And so I think she's a dynamic personality on the political scene. Whether she runs for president or not, that's her decision. But uh, she, can, she has done a lot of good, and I think she can continue to do a lot of good no matter what she does. And finally, you've seen a lot of presidents come and go. In your opinion, is Obama gone in 2012? Uh, you know, it's tough to beat an incumbent president. Uh, I think the idea, one of the things I'm most concerned about, I, I remember saying back in, uh, earlier this year, I, I spent... Um, the, uh, uh, the first, first six months of the Obama administration trying to convince Republicans as I traveled around the country that things weren't as bad as they seemed. And over the last nine months, I've been trying to convince Republicans things aren't as good as they seem. Uh, and, you know, don't get too high, don't get too low. And the, I, the idea that this is in the bag, that we're going to win the Senate, we're going to win the House, we're going to beat Barack Obama. There's a, uh, there's a lot of ground between now and then. A lot of things can happen. What we have to do is, uh, is go out and articulate our message, articulate the vision for America, uh, talk about the problems that this administration has, uh, has brought on, the, the huge both national security problems as well as the economic calamity that is facing this country as a result of their policies, and, uh, and propose alternatives. And if we do that, 
Uh, if we're principled and upbeat and encouraging and enthusiastic, I think we have a great chance of winning both elections in 2012 and 2010 before that. Former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum, thanks so much. Pleasure talking with you, sir, and good luck out there. Thank you, Ashley. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.